Hello and welcome to another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I shall be doing over these two trucks. They are both first series models of yesteryear. Number six, the GEC Osram Lamps trucks. And they were made between 1957 and 1960. However, just before I get started today, I'd like to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video. They are Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is an app for your phone or a browser extension for your home computer. It opens up the whole world's internet for you to peruse. I myself, being an English Australian, love to watch the British comedy shows on the BBC website. With Surfshark VPN, I can watch the shows I love without being region blocked by the site. It's safe and secure and keeps all of your personal information anonymous. It's cheaply priced and easy to download, but it gets even better. If you use the link in the description below with the promo code MATCHBOX, you will get 85% off the normal price and also three months use for free. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee and also 24 seven customer support. I'd recommend that you check it out and see what Surfshark can do for you. Now back to the video. So before I start, I would just like to have a quick look at these two models and also give a shout out to two people, the donators of these trucks. One is Stan Flatters. Uh, he donated this truck here and he's from Grantham, UK. And the second truck was donated by William Deegan from Pottstown in the USA. So thank you, Stan and William for that. Now having a look at these models, they have a fair bit of play wear. They are beautiful little models with a lot of characters, There's a little man inside there, which is brilliant, a nice feature. This one here is at a different level. This one's obviously been played with a lot because the back is uh, a little bit deformed and there's a lot of chipping on it and little dints on the edges. And also this section here, midsection of the chassis, which is one part, including the driver, is loose, almost like somebody's been trying to get that driver out. I couldn't help but notice that on both models, these little half moon shapes protruding from the engine compartment there. I thought that because they are in a position where they probably wouldn't get worn. Anyway, there's oval windows on the cabin and a nice little feature on the front there, which is an AEC, Associated Equipment Company badge. Uh, you can't see it here, but the logo is a silver winged blue triangle with AEC in silver and red in the center. Now looking at the play worn one, the axles are squeezed in, so it's had been thrown around a bit in the backyard by the looks of it, so I'm gonna have to try and fix that. And of course, don't forget this driver. Uh, I actually think I might take him out and paint him up and make him look rather special, but we shall see. Now on this particular model, the wheels, which are cast in metal, uh, they held on the axle by the end of the axle being flared by mechanical crushing, I guess, in a machine. Um, today, I'm going to try and remove these axles and reuse them. I'm using these long nose pliers to try and crush that flattened section uh, back to a round axle. Um, I end up with something like a rectangular, maybe a square ended axle, and it's not a very good job I did there. It was very difficult, very time consuming. Uh, I do get the wheel off, but I figure that's not the way to go. So instead, I am contemplating cutting them off and replacing them with original Matchbox axles from a box of spare axles that I've had. Uh, we'll see how we go with that. So I just cut these axles off. I know some of you will be horrified with that using the side cutting pliers. And I grab my little axles spares box out there of the rack. And you can see I've got loads and loads of axles here. A lot of them are too short to use, but this model has very short axles on it, which is quite handy for me because I'm pretty sure I'm gonna find some axles to fit. Uh, just a little note, if all else fails, I could use the tail of a rivet, a pop rivet like that one there. But I don't think I'm going to have to today. So here's a selection of axles that I've grabbed out of the box. Uh, the one on the right of this picture, the rusty one, is the original. So you can see the one I've picked is slightly longer, which is great. I can't go shorter, but I can definitely do longer. So uh, I'm giving myself a green light there, and away I go, chopping off all the other axles. They go in the bin and I shall work out a way of flattening the ends later on. Just a, a point of note here, the front and rear wheels are different. The rear wheel has double the number of spokes the front one. And I actually looked up a picture on the internet of the real truck, 
and these are very very accurate reproductions of the original wheels so a little, nice little detail there by Matchbox and a bit of fiddly work too getting those castings to cast so cleanly with the spokes so beautifully individually defined I'm going to give them a clean up because uh, they haven't been touched for I don't know since 1960s um, so I put them in the ultrasonic cleaner and leave them for 10 minutes in a warm bath of cleaning solution which is immersed in water there to try and save on the cleaning solution somebody gave me the tip and it seems to work now I've got to make up some paint before I strip the paint off so I've got the correct color um, having a look at these rather interestingly they are two shades of the same color so in the factory the batches of paint that were used these could have been weeks months who knows years apart uh, over time the color must have varied between one shade and another so I've got that Tamiya light green and I'm going to add some sea gray I think it's dark sea gray I'll show you in a minute and uh, trying to make up that very pale sort of gray green that the original models were painted in so I've got my stirring sticks and some pots here that actually have snappable lids on them. They're used for like soy sauce in a lunchbox or something similar. But they are ideal for mixing up paints. Uh, in the past I used to seal the, the paint pots up of the mixed up paint with tape etc. Um, these are a boon because they are airtight and they keep much longer and they're just convenient. So I add a couple of drops of that sea grey and a couple of drops more it doesn't take much it's a strong color and the, you can see the shades the shade of the paint is changing and slightly darker I have to test as I go so I've cleaned the roofs of these with some water and cotton buds to reveal the original paint in all its glory so I can get a better idea of how close I am to matching it my first attempt isn't the best it's slightly lighter than I would have liked but you can only tell when you put it on the model another thing I've noticed is that paint generally and some people would disagree but in my in my opinion in my experience the paint generally dries a shade darker which is something I never knew until I started playing around with these matchbox models because uh, it's very rare that you get a color straight out of the pot and you have to resort to mixing your own so this is the XF4 blue I found it needed a touch of blue to make it more like the original um, I'm using these flat paints by the way all three of these paints are flat it won't matter because at the end I'm going to spray the model with some gloss varnish to make them look nice and sparkly so basically what I'm going for is a mid-range tone that will suit both trucks and look roundabout right and will probably be something very close to a range of these models that came out by Matchbox as I said the shades probably changed maybe even daily depending on who was on the line that day mixing up the paints so I'm happy with that and I stick the lid on and set it aside for when it comes time to use there you can see XF21 XF63 and X4 actually X without the F is just a gloss paint so but they are compatible these Tamiya paints so you can mix and match at will which is very handy right whilst I was doing that the sonic cleaner was going flat chat in the background and it's shut off now so I've got these wheels out to check to see whether they are clean and what they look like they've definitely had all the crud removed from within the spokes and they look good although the metal seems to have been tarnished a little bit I'm not too sure what's going on there whether these were painted or not originally I don't know I always assume they were just cast metal but they may have had some kind of coating on them to make them uh, resistant to corrosion or similar so I might just paint those later with a matching paint like a sort of a gunmetal gray or something I'll have to see what I've got up my sleeve now I've mixed up the paint and uh, I'm confident I can repaint these models to the similar color I'm going to strip off the old decals and the old paint using this gelatinous paint stripper of mine which I continually chop and change the methods I use today I've decided to paint it on with a paintbrush uh, which I thought was quite good for these fiddly little castings especially 
With a cabin there with a man in it, you can stick the brush in and swizzle it around. However, a word of caution, when you stick the brush into the can, uh, I noticed it was halfway up the paintbrush handle, and at one stage there I had a finger, my finger resting in the um, paint stripper, which is never a good idea. So something to be mindful of. So after the paint's been stripped off, I'm going to try and get rid of some of the tarnish, uh, as we do. And uh, then I can have a look at this model and see if there's any areas that need specialist attention. I uh, use the Dremel with the, actually it's not the Dremel, it's a Ryobi copy. Um, it's a rechargeable one, which is not a bad bit of kit. Still experimenting with it, haven't had it long. So I'm using the rotary wire brush there and I've got that other one that's a cone shape to fit in the back to try and get into the corners because obviously the the, the um, radius of the, the the circular brush makes it impossible to get into the corners. Um, a word of caution, another word of caution, always wear eye goggles when you're using these brushes. There I ran a magnet over the work mat just to show you the number of fibers that fly off those wheels. And get one in the eye and I'm sure you'll know about it. So I've done a pretty good job here. There's uh, virtually all of the paints missing. That one there is the damaged one and it's revealed to be quite damaged here now the paint's removed. So I'm going to file down the edges and um, try and straighten those side walls out a little bit. But first I'm going to take this loose midsection including the driver out so I can paint him easily, uh, put, add a bit of detail to him just for something different, a bit of fun. Uh, just to remove a small amount of metal off the flange of that rivet holding it in and uh, with a fair bit of effort I might say I prize that off. This is a great idea. When I put it together I can bash it back together and it will look like it's not been disturbed. Here's a close-up of the driver, a rather rough casting but for the scale it's not too bad. It's got a steering wheel and some kind of plug at the lower rear of his back. Not too sure what it's for. Could be this model fits many other vehicles and it's an alternative attachment point. That's my best guess. So I've put some of this frog tape, which is a masking tape, on my vice anvil section there. And with a piece of tapered wood, I'm trying to get into the rear of the truck. I'm trying to get into the rear of the tray of the truck there and with a hammer, just gently bash the sides flat and take that bow out. As it is, I don't have much luck. This metal uh, alloy is rather strong, it was stronger than you think. So I'm going to have to add a little bit of heat with this tiny little blowtorch of mine, which gets a lot of use. You can't live without it these days. I must warn you though, it puts out a heck of a lot of heat. This model heats up and you can't hold it in literally 20 seconds. And I have cooked a model once and melted a bit of metal. So there I am bashing that straight. And as you can see, it turned out not too bad in the end. I'm uh, quite pleased. I won't say I'm happy with that twice in one video, so I won't say it. Um, underneath, there's the bent axle at the front there, under the cabin. I thought I might uh, put it in the vise and work on it. I'm using these clothes pegs, or a clothes peg here, as temporary vise clamps. I mean, they're made of soft wood, and they're quite handy. I can just slip them in there. Uh, if they get damaged, I can chuck them away because they're practically free to buy. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is heat this section up again with my little blowtorch. And then I'm going to whack that wedge of wood in that I've got, that I was using before. And try to pry those apart as gently as possible so they don't crack the metal. And try to make them parallel like they would have been when they first came out of the mould. This leaf spring assembly on the front there is very weak. Very thin metal on it, and I'm quite scared I'm going to melt it. As I said, the blowtorch is pretty brutal if you leave it in the one spot. So you have to keep it moving. That's my first attempt. Not too bad. A second attempt, and I pretty much get it where I want it to be. There's a comparison before and after, before and after. Right, uh, it's time to paint it. Before I do, I managed to get some isopropyl propyl alcohol. And I'm just going to bathe the model in it to get rid of any residue of the paint stripper. 
in the past I've had problems where I've painted it and uh, on close inspection in the corners of these angular type models like the the tray of this truck and the cabin you, no matter how how much you wash it in the sink try and get all the paint stripper off you there's always a little bit hiding somewhere and you don't see it until you spray the model and then on final inspection you think oh that looks a bit ordinary in the corner there what's happened and you realize there's been just a, a pinhead of paint stripping residue left there so hopefully today I'll fix that with the alcohol bath wouldn't mind an alcohol bath myself uh, now time to give the surface a fine spray of the light grey first up the man and his seat that's just given me a nice clear plain background under which to place the paint that I'm going to paint that with and make this like a little custom I guess you could say just for something different. Now the main models. Got the fan on in the spray booth there, sucking the overspray out of the window and into the garden where it disperses naturally. And uh, as usual, these hemostats, the little forceps there, spring loaded lockable ones. They uh, lock, uh, sit, rest on these magnetic clamps whilst the paint dries. Once it's dry, I like to look at the model and in awe of all the details that are hitherto been invisible to see. The undercoat tends to sort of make them stand out, like the radiator grills there, the leaf springs. And somewhat interestingly, the driver's side door doesn't have a door handle, but the passenger side door does. So that's a little bit weird and I can't fully understand why that would be the case. Let me know in the comments if you've uh, got a theory on why that is so. The radiator has got a radiator cap on it and I'm still not too sure what those little half moon things on the side are. I like the detail there of the probably wooden spars that support the cargo bay on the back of the chassis there. There's the driver with that random protrusion from his buttocks which, as I said, I think is probably an alternative attachment point for a different model, possibly. Don't know, just a theory. Let me know if you know if this man is used in another model, as I am quite curious, and I'd like to know, because something interesting, you know? So this paint's been sitting here for 12 hours or so, so I'll give it a stir with a little battery-powered paint mixer there, which is always good to have quick and easy blending all those paints and thinners together and makes the paint come out in a nice uniform color now this model here the one that I'm customizing I actually I ground off the seam on the cargo bay on the back of the truck there and you'll see at the end that one of them hasn't got a seam and the the one I'm keeping original has so that's just something I did that I normally wouldn't do I'm going to spray these wheels now with some metal coat there we are from Humbrol so this is a paint that you thin with mineral turpentine. You can't use the, the normal Tamiya thinners with this paint. The mineral turpentine is being phased out now, I think, as it gives you a bit of a headache if you smell it. So don't smell it. Here's another tip from me. Um, these turned out quite nice, actually, that color. Now, obviously, these are magnified images, and you may think, oh, they look a little bit grotty. But they look really, really good. Now I'm going to paint this little man up as best I can, which probably won't be that good, but I'll give it my best shot. I've got this Valley Joe paint. Uh, it's a special one I bought when I was doing a, a tank model once, a Tamiya tank model, and I wanted to paint up the tank commander in the turret. And I bought that set just for that job. This is probably the only second time I've used it, and this guy now looks like the Joker. As you can see, I think he's happy in his work. He's uh, sitting erect there and smiling ear to ear. I did mess around for quite a bit with this guy. I mean, look at that. That's a big pen next to him. So you can see he's pretty small. And to get his eyeballs looking anything good, well, it was beyond my capabilities. So it ended up, looks like his eyebrows are, are, are low and his eyes are shut. You know, maybe he's about to have an accident or something. I'm going to now glue this midsection back in with a couple of drops of super glue. Remember, I didn't drill out this rivet 
completely, so I'm hoping to snap it on over the rivet and the super glue will keep it from coming loose. So I apply it very gently, not with the nozzle of the bottle because it can pour out. Been caught out like that before, just with a tip of a wooden toothpick there. Carefully place it into position. And because it's such a tight fit, I have to get that little piece of wood again. I'm glad I've got that bit of wood. I've used it, um, I'll have used it three times in this makeover. There it is, there's the famous bit of wood. And I'll give it a whack with a hammer. And it seats just fine. Looks so much better than it did before, and it's solid too. Not too sure about the Joker sitting in the in the driver's seat there. I'll see what he looks like at the end before I make a decision on what I'm going to do with him. But I've got the wheels. Remember the front and the rear wheels are different. Don't mix them up. The front ones are slightly smaller diameter, I think, and they've got less spokes on them. And I'm making sure I put these axles through all the same direction. So from the right to the left, from the driver's side to the passenger side. That way all those lovely mushroomed ends will be on display on one side when they're in a display cabinet. And the crushed ends can go to the back. To crush them I've got these multi-grips, mole grips, I don't know, vice grips, various terms apply. And I've ground the grooves off in the jaws there so that when I crush these ends it leaves a nice flat flattened area not a grooved area that's the theory very tight these things I've, I've set them to a, a really small gap and not only is it hard to close them it's also very hard to open them without the model flying across the room so here I'm supporting the model I'm actually pushing the the spanner away from the model so as it releases it doesn't damage the model and there is a close-up of the flattened end of the new axle it looks a bit ordinary doesn't look like it's factory finished but I'm going to address that soon I'm going to grind it down file it and sand it and paint it and it should look like the original did I've done this before on another couple of models and they turn out not too bad and Unless you were watching this video, looking at the model in the display cabinet, you probably wouldn't know that it wasn't an original axle end. So these are what I'm going to be using to do that. The Dremel with the sanding disc, small flat file and a little emery board. And that's what it looks like at the end. Quite good, stops the wheels from falling off and allows them to turn freely. I just put a little dab of silver paint on there and it makes the metal all sort of uniform colour and just finishes it off nicely. Now this is the silver paint that I use, the Pentel silver paint marker. I use this more often than not because these days I've realised it's a, a duller silver and you can buy chrome pens but this is more like the original matchbox color silver that they would paint on in the factory so that's all I'm trying to do here make them look as good as new and close to what they look like when they came out the factory so if I put chrome on there it'd be obviously a sort of a makeover not that I'm trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes because anyone who's worth their salt could look at this under a through a magnifying glass and instantly know that it had been renovated. So there's no worry of that happening. I'm not passing these off as, as originals. And uh, yeah, because I noticed that some of these had those little half moons painted silver, I decided to paint one with the silver half moons and one without. If you look on the internet, there's a variety of, of style of these. I guess whoever was painting them on the day added uh, extra detail or, or couldn't be bothered. I've managed to get some replica decals from recovertoy.com I think they're an Australian company. The uh, reason I think that is because my orders come pretty quick which is good. I cut them down to minimize the border there and uh, I leave because I'm right-handed I leave a little extra tab on the right hand side because uh, the way I put them on is I use my left finger to hold the dampened decal onto the model and then I drag the backing sheet away to the right. 
before you put these on, you have to soak them in some warm water. And I've added one drop of washing up detergent to this tiny little bowl of water here. And what that does is it breaks the surface tension. And when you put the decals into the water, it allows them to become instantly immersed rather than floating on the surface. And you can then fish them out and allow them to soak and become detached from the backing sheet on your finger. If you try it out, you'll see what I mean. So I always make sure I clean, have a nice clean work area and I, I set everything up before I start. You only get one shot at these things and so often in the past I've stuffed it up and then I had to wait another couple of weeks to get some more replacement decals before I can finish the model. It's very frustrating. So these days I take my time and I'm very methodical with the setup and this is something that I do these days. I, I take it out of the water and rather than leave it in the water for the decal to release from the backing paper, I leave it sitting on my finger. That way you don't turn around and see the decal floating around in the water and you have to chase it around. Um, there's no risk of that if you just dunk the thing in the water and then take it out. If it doesn't release, you can just dunk it in again and take it out a second time. So th this is something that I've been doing recently and I, it f I feel it works for me. So maybe it's something you could try. Uh, after I've positioned them exactly where I want them, I try and get the gap even all the way around because if not, it's quite noticeable. And they have to be perfectly horizontal too. Although probably the, if it was an original, they'd be slapped on and you'd see all manner of angles and distances around the sides. So that one went on quite good. Uh, it's always a relief, but the tension is still in the air as you keep going, especially when you've got four to go on two models. I mean, you can stuff up at any stage, really. Um, it's just what kind of a day you're having and um, how much you concentrate at the time. It's, uh, it's something a bit touch and go at times. But I managed to pull that one off. Now, when I finish putting these on, I give the decals a clear coat. I don't do it until after I've shown them these on the carousel. Reason being, I've done it in the past and it's caused problems. It's gone on funny, it's bubbled, whatever. And uh, it sets me back another couple of days. So I do it after I finish the video. So take it from me, that's what I do. Here's the finished articles. I think they look great. I actually prefer the one without the painted driver. So I'm going to give one of these away. I'm going to keep one and I'm going to give another one away. And if you want to be in the running to win that model, please leave a comment and include Kevin's quote for the day. And if you've watched the video all the way through, you'll know what I'm talking about. I'll announce the winner in the next video. What you'll have to do if you are the winner is contact me, uh, give me your address, let me know which model you want, and I will mail it out free of charge. So thanks for watching. It's been great. And uh, please subscribe, like, and recommend to your friends. And until next time, this is Marty saying, see you later. That would be beautiful. Yeah. Oh, you've just come in the back of the shop. Did you know that? Oh, sorry. No, that's all right. It'd be interesting. Have a look. Mm -hmm. Oh! Forget that. Cut.